I came, we uh, invited each and every one here. Uh, our post three candidates, our great post three candidates are uh, the incumbent, uh, Mr. Vernon Collette, uh, and uh, his opponent is Chuck Hart. Now, Chuck told me that he had a conflict tonight. He would be out of town working, but I did give him the opportunity to uh, to do a video and send it in, but um, I don't think he, he didn't, he didn't respond back, so. But anyway, uh, sorry that Chuck couldn't, but you know, sometimes you just can't get everybody's schedule, so. Anyway, I am going to turn it back over to the moderator and we'll go from there. All right, I'm not sure we can call this a debate since there's only one person. <laughs> uh, yeah, we can make him move seats and you can think it's a lot uh, They're all going to sound alike though when it's done. Um, we'll start with, uh, with an opening statement and then we'll just go to some questions. Um, we'll ask a few from the panel and then we'll let the audience answer. And uh, it's always good to be the one guy here. So. So lonely. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Vernon Clett, and I'm seeking re-election for Commissioner Post 3. Tonight, my wife Debbie's here with us with one of my daughters, Amanda, and her fiance, Oscar. We have uh, three children at family. We have another daughter, Ashley, who couldn't make it tonight. We have a son, Cameron, has a wife, Kayla, and a grandson, Case, and they couldn't make it tonight either. I graduated from Jacksonville State University where I attained a major in marketing with a minor in banking and finance. And back in 2005, I started my own company, Kinsman Wealth Educators. Uh, it's a company that serves the financial industry. And the experience I've gained from running my own business in the financial industry has given me a wealth of knowledge and experience to bring to the Board of Commissioners. The first time I ran, I promised that I would bring honesty and transparency back to the Board of Commissioners. And I delivered. I also promised that I would not raise taxes unless necessarily had to, and we did not have to. I delivered. My opponent's not here tonight. I'm really sad that he's not. I wish he was. Uh, debates are designed to educate the public on the, how we feel on the issues and how we would best resolve those issues. My, <clears throat> excuse me. My opponent has called the lawsuits frivolous and that he would support it. He would drop it. Uh, as we heard in the last debate, that would not be the wisest thing to do. The Palm County Airport Authority, along with Brett Smith, are responsible for those bonds. And they're not making a payment. They made it. The first, Brett Smith made about 400000 in payments, and then he quit making the payment. And now, today, you, the taxpayer, has paid almost $1.2 million. That's a 20-year bond, so this is just going to go higher and higher. I hate that we have to sue for it, but if you tell me you don't want me to sue for it, you want me to drop the lawsuit, then you're saying that the taxpayers are okay making this tax payment. And I don't believe any of you guys are really okay with making that payment. I believe you really do want me to go after that money. If everybody was told the truth on that issue, I think everybody, even my opponent, would disagree with his own statement. About the commercialization of the airport, you know, general aviation is what it was intended to be and that's what it should be. And I support the innovation, but I don't support commercialization. So with that, thank you, and we'll get in with the questions. Well, Commissioner, welcome this evening, and thank you for your service as a district commissioner, and most appreciative of your willingness to ask the voters to send you back. Uh, that's a commitment to your community that, that few show. So thank you for both. Well, you're welcome, and thank you, because I was in Cobb under you for a while. I sincerely believe uh, in the years ahead, three to five years, that Pauline County is going to face an explosion of new growth. And I think it is incumbent on uh, the leaders of the county, both political and business leaders, to come together with a growth plan, be it a land use plan, a zoning plan, however you want to label your plan to manage the growth that's coming. So the things that have impacted the counties around you in a negative way don't impact you in a negative way. 
And I think infrastructure is a very important ingredient in managing growth. Most counties wait until the growth comes and then they try to figure out an infrastructure plan. Infrastructure being roads, bridges, water, and sewer. And the primary concern is, okay, how do I pay for it first before the cash flow is here to reimburse me? How do you see Paulding County and the Board of Commissioners and the business leaders in the community coming together to project the next five years of growth in this county and to manage it so that you can define where businesses come and where people come and where the expansion happens. How do you propose to manage that? Great question. When I first got elected, I was amazed to go out and look at some of the industrial parks we had in Pauling County, and I was surprised to find out they didn't even have sewer. Why in the world would you build an industrial park and not put sewer in it? Some of these parks were located close to Hiram, some in Dallas, some out in other parts of the county. It's very important that we get together with each city and with the other leaders, the chamber, and everybody, and we have to be on the same page. In my opinion right now, sewer is probably the most important thing we can do in this county. I've got three major deals working in my post right now, and all three of them are saying, hey, we want to come to Pauline. They're not worried about the fight about the airport. It doesn't even come up with any of the three. What they're worried about is, if I come to Pauline, I've got to have sewer. If you can't get me sewer, then I may not come to Pauline. So we do have to work with those guys. Uh, I think we're off to a great start. When I first got here, the IBA was its own deal. EDO was its own deal. Uh, the chamber was its own deal, and they're all three working separate of each other. Well, guess what? We're in the process of putting them all together, getting each one of them to find place, and that's going to really set the stage for the next probably 10 to 20 years. So you're running for re-election? Yes, sir. Um, but let me ask you, why did you originally run, and why are you running now uh, going into a re-election, and what that what will that mean for the citizens of Paul? I originally ran because ever since I was old enough to vote my first election, I actually voted. I always took a lot of interest in national politics, but I never was really too involved in the local politics. And one day I was sitting there wondering, you know, uh, why is the nation going in such the wrong direction? It's a direction I just don't care for. And real quick, it was laid in my heart that I was willing to ask God to clean up our nation, but wasn't willing to clean up my own backyard. So real quick, uh, after running for a while, I had to uh, say, okay, Lord, I hear you. I will run for office. Uh, why this time? Because the job's not finished. Uh, there's a lot you learn in your first four years. I don't want to have to just walk out now. I think two terms is a great time to serve. There's a lot going on. It's coming out of a recession. Everybody knows that housing uh, and, and industry came to complete stop. The housing is just now coming back. And what follows and lags behind housing? Commercial and industry. So I think we're primed and ready to go, and I'm excited about it. We've been talking tonight. Hello. <laughs> We've been talking tonight about growth in Pauley County and businesses coming to the county. What do you see your role as a post commissioner, your duty as a post commissioner, as opposed to the duty of the economic developer? Thank you. My, my mission or my job description is different than the person who's economic development or even the IBA. They are the people who are to go out and find the jobs and attract them to the county. And the chamber, once they're here, the chamber's job is to hold them here, to keep them interested in the county, not want them to get away. You know, love the quality of life that we have to offer. Holland County has more green space than any county in Georgia. We're always going to have that, and that's going to be a great, a great pull to this county. But, um, and so what is your role? My role, thank you. So my role is, is dealing with infrastructure. You know, I would probably vote a no on the movie studio. I don't think, you know, putting $9 million in the movie studio is the right thing to do. But what I would do is say, hey, we got to put money into infrastructure. And maybe that's water, that's sewer. It's like I said before, there's three big companies looking at Post 3 right now. And what's their concern? All three of them are telling me it's the sewer. For those folks who believe that government's primary responsibility is public safety, 
protecting its people and its structures. How do you see yourself and the Board of Commissioners working with the Sheriff to attract quality candidates to come in as deputies with regards to benefits and salaries and support functions that are able to be competitive on a regional basis and not train them and lose them for higher wages to an adjacent county. How are you working with the sheriff to ensure that he is able to protect all of the citizens and all of the structures and facilities in the county? That's always going to be a problem, Pauline, because we sit next to Cobb County. It's always going to be, hey, I can run Cobb County and make more money as an officer or any position we actually have to offer. At least for a while, it's going to be that way. But things we can do is the quality of life that we offer here in Pauline County. That's why the quality of life is so important. The, the Silver Common Trail that we have, the waterfall we have. I'd like to see us one day turn that waterfall into a park and, and they didn't draw people, have a trail to the water. Waterfall. People love waterfalls. If you haven't seen it, it's beautiful. So that's one thing we can do. One thing, too, you heard me say, I'm Kinsman Wealth Educators. Well, that helps people retire. And one thing I've been working with Gary with now is to see how can we improve their retirement. Because money is not always the bottom line, but if you can show people a better quality of life and say, hey, not only that, when you retire because of what we've offered, what we've set up, you're going to have a better retirement than they can offer you over there, then I think that's one way to hold those people and keep them going somewhere else. Because just because you go somewhere else for money doesn't mean you're going to be happy and doesn't mean it's always what you want it to be. So we heard earlier, I want to ask you as well, what, and, and what is your definition of smart growth and do you support smart growth initiatives in Colin County? Again, when I first got elected, I met with all the department heads. One of the department heads aren't with us anymore. Sat me down and was telling me the things that he thought was wrong with the Commissions were doing wrong. Uh, he also told me he was getting ready to leave. And one of the things he talked about was smart growth. And I don't know that I fully understand the whole definition, but I know one thing he did say that I disagree with. He said that smart growth was uh, planning not just communities, but also having more apartments in the local community. And he believed that we had to have more apartments. Right now, Holland County has a moratorium on apartment building. The ones we have are the ones we have. We're not getting any more unless we live in the moratorium. He said that the first thing we need to do to have smart growth is to lift the moratorium. That's the only reason I know that, and I disagree with that. I do not want to lift that moratorium right now. The burden that, that, that apartments put on the infrastructure and the finances of the county are high. And I think right now what we need to focus on is attracting businesses to take some of that tax burden off the people. We're all about defining definition so I'm going to ask you <laughs> um, uh, what is the difference in defining your job in comparison to the uh, county commissioner's job the chairman of the county commissioner's job once again when I first got elected the first thing I did was look up the enabling legislation and I recommend everybody in this room do that Read the enabling legislation because it tells how our government is, is supposed to function. One thing I found that I read in there and I love about the way Pauline County is set up is that you have five commissioners. All five commissioners are equal. Not one has more power than the other. Four commissioners are part time. Their jobs are a little less. We deal more with department heads. The full-time chairman uh, is paid a full-time salary, but he also has to deal with the day-to-day -day operations. He has to do the budget because he's full-time. He has to do things like nominate people, but he can't nominate someone and just place them in that position. The other four commissioners are part of that decision because our role is important too. And so that's the major difference is that he's really looking after the day-to-day -day operations. Uh, we're all focused on the budget. We all have to deal with the budget. He just presents the budget and then we make changes to it and vote on it. In your opening statements, one of the comments you made is Baldwin County is one of the leading counties with uh, open green space. And that is certainly true. But what is equally true is the reason that that is true. And that almost half the county has yet to be developed. 
therefore, by definition, that's a significant amount of open space or green space. But if the growth of our region and our state is as what has been projected to be, and Pauling begins to grow as anticipated, are you willing to invest and support a concept of creating and purchasing parkland for future development? And if so, how would you pay for that? In my opening statement, when I said we had all the green space, and I, I should know this, I didn't know this, it's not coming to me right now, I think it's 26,000 acres, and it may be more than that. Uh, most counties don't have that. That 26,000 acres is already in a WMA type situation uh, where we can't touch it, we can never build on it. Uh, we can't put parks on it. It's always going to be green space. It would be limited to what we can actually do. And we're even talking about purchasing some more. We do have plenty of parks in the county. I don't think this time we need any other parks. Maybe the waterfall, that would be it. But yes, uh, as people come to the county, they do need places to have recreation. So I would support that. The way we've been doing it is let SPLOS pay for it. Uh, the only thing bad about that is SPLOS builds uh, bricks and sticks but it doesn't do maintenance and it doesn't pay for salaries. So every time you build a park, you have to be aware that next year you have to manage that park. So that's uh, something you have to keep in mind. So uh, talk, to, talk to us about your feelings on the uh, legal cases between the airport and, and with the county uh, and, and where you stand on that, where you think we need to go. The legal case, and like I said in my opening statement, I, I would not drop the cases. Uh, it is in the court system. We had to hire conflict counsel. And Todd explained what conflict counsel was because the same law firm represented two county entities, so we had to go to outside counsel to get attorney representation. The one law uh, suit, I think, is important. The movie studio is a bad deal for this county. It's not talked about. Though. Why are people not upset with the movie studio? We've got almost $9 million in it. The reason they're not upset because there was an actual vote taken on the movie studio. It was a 3-2 vote. Three people voted to go forward, two people voted not to. But three is a quorum and they won. So it was voted on. It was done transparently and out in the open. The airport was not done transparently. It was done in another county. We know they broke the Sunshine Law because their own attorney said in court that they broke the Sunshine Law. So they were over there planning to take the airport commercial after promises had been made to the city of Atlanta we wouldn't do that. Promises had been made to our own citizens that we wouldn't do that. And yet they did. And that I could not go back on those promises. And also about the last lawsuit real quick, is like I said before, that is just to get back the money that we're owed. You have a broken contract right now with a man that said he would make the bond payments and he's not doing it. Let's get our money back. Thank you. In the last go round, we spoke about the uh, new House Bill 930 that requires, uh, will require Falcon County to put a transit uh, system in place. I have three questions for you about that. Okay? <laughs> Write it down. Okay, number one is, uh, what kind of transit system do you support? <clears throat> Where will it go? And how will we pay for it? Okay, I've had conversations with our local delegation, some of them, not all of them. I also have had a conversation with our DOT representative for the district. It's my understanding after talking to them about this bill that there are five counties that it's mandatory. Now, it might be forced on its later, but right now it's just those five counties that it's mandatory. So, therefore, knowing that, and in my understanding is that there will be a referendum brought to the people and the people will decide if they want MARTA to come to this county or any type of transit system like that. Uh, I'm not really for any transit at this time. I moved to Palmer County to get away from Cobb County, to get away from Atlanta. Uh, we do need more businesses here, but that's not the reason I moved to Palmer County. So the type I want probably right now, I have to say, is I'm gonna fight against anything right now. Uh, 
if it happens and gets forced on us, then we'll cross that bridge, but I'll still fight it, and I'll fight it until the very end. Uh, where will it go? Well, since I'm not supporting, I don't think it goes anywhere. I know there's a group of people who want this because a commercial airport can't survive without transit. A commercial airport has to have a MARTA type uh, transit system to survive. And without it, it will not survive. So that's why there's going to be some people who are going to fight for it because they want that commercial airport, they want that transit system uh, to pay for it. Is a 1% 30-year tax. I'm against that. I just tell you right now, I'll fight it all until uh, y'all tell me not to. From a county perspective, from a board of commissioners perspective, um, in managing your budget while the growth is causing additional spending without appropriate revenues. Are there any departments or services within the county that you would look at privatizing to improve the service, save money by controlling spending? Lots of time the private industry can do a better job than we can do. I would be open to looking at anything like that, but I would make sure that it really did save the county money. If we're doing it and we're doing it efficiently, then I wouldn't want to change it. But if there's some room that we could do something and it would save the county money and get the job done more efficiently, then I would be open to it and I'd look, look at it. But other than that, I would have a more specific. You alluded to the legislature in your last response. So let me ask you, in fact, we have two of our legislators here, Paul that Rex Fraud and Michael Gravel. What is the proper relationship on any given issue uh, between the county commissioner here in Pauly and our elected officials that serve in the building? Keeping their hands out of our pocket. <laughs> <laughs> they are valuable, and I do value my relationship with them. And there's plenty of times I call Mike and he knows that and call some of the others. Uh, they are valuable because they do give us information. They tell us what's going on. They tell us how it's going to affect the county. Uh, so those are uh, relationships I really respect and admire. And uh, yes, I like them. And I, I don't want to do away with them because it is too valuable. It is something that we do need to work together. It's the same thing it's like with the cities. We need to work together. At the end of your term, what would you like to look back and see? As your greatest accomplishment. A lot of sewers. <laughs> Seriously, I think uh, one of my greatest accomplishments would be just knowing that the people that I serve said about me that I had integrity and said more than anything that I listened to what they had to say. And even if I disagreed with them sometime, uh, if, they lit if they told me how they felt, and I voted the way they put me in office to vote. Okay. This is an issue that I think is enormously important for Paulding County as, as citizens, as a business community, and for the political leaders. I firmly believe that when traffic becomes congestion, you can't fix congestion. And if you are in Pauline County and at 7 o'clock in the morning, you have to get to 75. You have to go down Dallas Highway. You can walk faster than you can drive. That's congestion. Or if you go down 278, towards 285 and pass through Hiram. That's congestion. That's not traffic. Whether it's 7 in the morning or 4 in the afternoon, it's a quality of life issue. I believe that Pauling County has a choice to make. Either become a part of the congestion or draw your own conclusions by bringing people and businesses here that don't require traveling out of the county but supporting those in the county but that would be a dramatic change
from the land use plan that governs the uh, zoning decisions that you make. From a philosophical standpoint, what is your viewpoint on those two choices? I honestly don't feel like we have a choice. I think it's something we have to do. But this all sets and rests back on the sewer issue. Remember, I've said it already twice. There's three big deals just in my post alone. One, I was talking about one million square foot building. They aren't coming if they can't get sewer. They've already picked Polly. This is where they want to be. But if we can't get sewer to them, they're not coming. How many jobs would that be? I don't know. They have not told us that yet. But I am doing everything in my power to keep them here and to get sewer. I'm doing everything in my power to help the other two also. Uh, is it going to happen? I don't know for sure. But yes, you're right. You know, another thing when I first got elected, and I looked at 278, I went to our uh, DOT guy and said, why in the world is the 278 through Hiram go like this? You know, one level here, one level here. And I was told because when they came through the four lane, they never anticipated that Hiram would grow the way it did. Now, you talk why it did, I've got my theories on that. But what I've done for the last three years, and Todd alluded to it, we just have got to where the state's going to do a study and see if we can't convert that road in front of Sam's Club, Target, and all that, as a, make it a county road, convert it into an access road, and change some things, and then get rid of most of the stoplights between Bill Carruth and all the way up to Lake Road. It may be only one stoplight and all there, but you don't have right ins and right outs. But that's something looking at be very costly, and we need to stay for that. Okay, that is going to conclude the, the panel questions. We have three uh, questions from the audience. These will be audience questions. We'll just start and ask those, and then we'll we'll let him have his uh, final say, and we'll be done. Okay, for post three, Commissioner, how are you going to bring high-paying jobs to Paulding County? <laughs> Again, uh, I don't know that it's my place to bring jobs to the county. It's my place to make sure this is a great place for them to locate. It's my job to make sure the infrastructure is there, that they've got water when they need it, that they've got fiber optics when they need it, that they've got sewer so that they can build. That's my job as a commissioner. It's the EDO's job to get the business here, the chamber's job. What is the total amount of money the Board of Commissioners has spent on legal fees in the airport fiasco? And how much more money are the citizens going to have to be charged? That question is almost impossible to answer unless they want to go ahead and stop the 139 certificate now and do that. Yes. I think everything goes away. My understanding is close to 500000 but that includes the money that we spent fighting Atlanta, and if you think 500,000 a lot, wait till Atlanta kicks it up. Believe me, Atlanta is not going to let us have a commercial airport easy. They're going to fight us to the end, and they've got the money to do it. So we're going to spend a whole lot more if we go down this path. But it's also because of the suing to get the money from the bonds. Uh, I don't like the idea that you have a man that signed a contract, a man with a company from New Jersey, comes down here, wants to have some improvements made to the airport. We get bonds for him. He promises to make the bond payments, makes maybe two or three of the payments, then says, I'm not making them anymore. Those in on the uh, Pauley County Airport Authority, they don't have the money, honestly, to make the payments, and I really know they can't do it. But for us to get the money, your money, the taxpayer's money, because it's you. When he said he's gonna stiff the county, he's stiffing you, the taxpayer. And you should be upset. You should be calling this man and telling him to pack up and go back to New Jersey. We don't need him. And so lawsuits will probably be here for a while and make it more expensive unless they said, okay, no 139. Well, based on uh, the answers that you've given so far, I think we kind of know uh, how you feel on this one, but um, if reelected, would you be in favor of terminating the county's commercialization lawsuit against the airport authority and firing VOC conflict counsel, and why? Yes, I've answered that probably two or three times already. Uh, I would not be in favor of that. I said if everybody knows the truth of that, I think they wouldn't be in favor of it either. 
But a lot of half-truths are being said out there, and I don't appreciate it because you need to know the whole truth. And the truth is that we do need conflict counsel right now. He's been with us from the beginning. The city of Atlanta has not gone away. Uh, it was made, a statement was made by our chairman that he would just soon fight Atlanta without any representation. I think that would almost be a violation of our oath when we got in office. Our oath says we will do everything in our power to protect Pauley County, the citizens, and the money that they bring to the county. And not fighting this, to me, is a violation of that oath. So don't come up here and say you're going to take the oath and say, hey, I'm going to drop this, because it's going to cost more money in the long run. If we went into in court against Atlanta without representation, a judge would not look favorable on that. They would probably win, and we'd probably owe them millions. We've got to do this. I hate it as much as you do, but again, the solution is stop at 139, and it all goes away. Okay, as we've said before, uh, it takes a lot to push yourself out here, and we appreciate that. People of Pauling are uh, lucky to have people that are willing to put their time into it. It is the lowest paying part-time job you can ask for, but he does ask for it, so you know, can't cry for it. Uh, we're going to do a closing statement, one minute. Um, just step up here to the front, we'll take a look at you, and uh, good luck. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody tonight. I'd like to thank Kyle Botek, and I'd also like to thank the Republican Party for doing this. As your commissioner, I kept you the citizens of Post 2, Post 3 engaged by giving you a voice. I met with, talked to, and most importantly, listened to you. When you said no tax increase, I listened. When you said don't buy the SunTrust building, removing a prime piece of commercial property from the tax roll, I listened. When you told me you wanted our airport to remain as, a, as it was intended, a regional general innovation airport, I listened. When you told me that you don't want Martin, I'm listening. I hear you. I know what you're saying. And I will fight to keep Martin out. Thank you so much for giving me the chance to represent you on a county, as a county commissioner. It has been one of the greatest honors of my life. I ask for your vote May 22nd. Thank you very much. I especially want to thank and please give my hand our panelists for asking the questions. I'll just let you guys know we will be back here Thursday night with uh, at 6:45, not 7, 6:45, and we will be here with the starting with the Board of Education first. And after that debate, uh, we will start with question four. So I look forward to seeing all of you guys on Thursday. So y'all have a good Wednesday and we'll see you later.